always save the best for last. That's what I do, right? <laughs> I saved your most asked question for last. Well, hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I am going to share with you some of my top secret things, my hacks that I use when I am doing paint consultations with my clients. And these are little things, they're, they're tiny little things that will completely change your rooms. I am not fronting, I am not even giving you clickbait, I promise you. These little things will change everything. Because we run a design and real estate business, we're out of Atlanta. These little paint hacks are things that have come from being with clients literally all week long. And these are the things that come out of the conversations that we have. And decisions, there's so many little decisions that you have to make when you're going to paint a room. And a lot of times you don't think about them until you're literally about to paint the room. And either your painter asks, or if you're doing it yourself, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> I have a lot more decisions to make than just which color am I picking here. So I think you're gonna love today's video. I think you're gonna find it really helpful. At least I hope so. <laughs> so uh, cheers, you guys. Let's jump in. Don't forget, hit subscribe. Oh my gosh, you guys, we just hit 150,000 subscribers. <laughs> That's completely unreal to me. I can't believe that. So, oh, look at me. I've got my phone sitting here. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. And I guess we're going to go for 200 next. Woo! It's crazy. So, thank you guys so much. I'm going to share with you. I've got my little list on my phone. I'm a list maker. Is anybody else like that too? Let me know down in the comments if you are a list maker as well. And let's jump in. Ooh, this could be so much fun. <laughs> Okay, so number one is that you need to test the paint colors in the room. That you can't just take a color and then just slap it on to any room or any home. So today we're mostly gonna focus on interior paint and then maybe if you guys like this video, let me know and we can do a whole one of these videos for exterior because I have like 8 billion little, little tricks that I use and little hacks that are I do a lot of exterior paint consultations and I'm just telling you that, yeah, let me know. Let me know down in the comments if that is a video that you're interested in as well. So test your paint colors in your room. Now I know that a lot of people like the little peel and stick ones. I like to put the paint on the wall. Now my warning to you is this. If you have a room that is yellow, it does not matter what color you put on the wall, with that yellow, everything's going to appear more yellow than it will when the paint is actually up and there's no more yellow in the room. So these are the kinds of factors that you have to think about. You have to think about which direction the sun comes into your room, how the room's gonna look in the morning, how it will look in the afternoon, how's it gonna look in the, in the evening when you have the lights turned on. You have to think about your paint more holistically than just the little bitty card that they hand you or taking the paint deck and going, okay, let's see. I'm gonna pick beige. Everybody's got agreeable gray, so that's probably gonna work for me too. Well, it probably will, but it's gonna look different in your house and doesn't everyone else's. And there's a chance that maybe you would have been happier with a different color than that. So I say, get some samples. It's worth the money. Get the samples, try them on the wall, paint yourself a nice big patch. I try to put it next to the trim so it's as close to the window as I can possibly get it so I'm minimizing the other color in the room and you can also paint it on a board if you want to but again like is that a true color of the yeah I, I'm like is it really a true representation that's why I don't really do it I, I just like to put the color on the wall that's just me personally <music> number two Paint the vents the same color as the wall or ceiling that they are on. A lot of times what will happen is that there is a vent. Maybe it's on the wall or it's on the ceiling and they come in white. Sometimes you can buy them in like a bronze color. Um, if you could, sometimes you can find them in black, but most people buy them in white. And if your room has a color on the wall and then you have a white vent, 
What people don't realize is that whatever is different in the room is what's gonna grab your eye. So when you walk into a space, if the whole room is a dark color and you have a white vet, your eye is immediately gonna go to the vet. It blends in, you just don't see it anymore. So it's a really great trick that will really help create a very elevated look in your space and it will just help it to feel more finished and just, I don't know, it is more high-end, it's more designer because I think that's what designers usually would do, is they'll paint the vets to make them disappear because why would you want to accent that? <laughs> you don't want the eye to be drawn to that, right? You want it to be drawn to the beautiful room and not to this little thing. The next thing up is the light switch covers. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, we tried to hide things that aren't pretty and a lot of times we forget that the outlets are another thing that we get a choice on. If you have a white room and a white outlet and a white plate cover, it disappears. It doesn't it doesn't add flavor to the conversation of the room. It just goes away. It's just silent. It does what it's meant to do. It's supposed to be silently supporting the room. Now, if it's a different color than the room, that's where the problem comes in. If the room is white and you have a an off-white, one of those beige ones from like the 90s, I got a lot of those in my house, they stick out like a sore thumb. And then if they're black, which sometimes maybe somebody painted the room and switched out the light switch plate, maybe they switched them all out to brass or bronze, and now your eye immediately goes to it because it's a different color than the wall. So I always, always, unless I want to make the light switch a feature, I make it disappear by making sure that it's the same color. I promise it's that big of a deal. So you're gonna probably all walking around your house going, oh, she's right, that does stick out. I didn't notice it before. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I've done that to you. <laughs> but I promise it'll make your room feel really good. It just makes it feel cohesive and all the details have been attended to and it really will, tra it really will transform your space. <laughs> Ooh, yes, create a focal point. You guys know I love to use paint to create a focal point. Paint can be very useful if you don't have a lot of money and you don't have a means of making a, a major focal point in the space. My fireplace is a prime example of this. I would love, oh, oh would I ever, I was just imagining it. Did you see that? I was like, <gasps> <laughs> to have a marble fireplace, oh my word. And mine is two story, so can you just imagine all that beautiful marble? Oh, the statement it would make, the way it would just draw your eye when you come in the room. Some of you might be dreaming of having a stone fireplace and oh, it'd be so beautiful, but what do you do if you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to create a focal point in your space, you can use paint. And that's what I did. It was the poor woman's version of the marble fireplace. I made it all black. And I even painted the mantle black. And I even, even when I had just tile, I even painted the tile. And then I went ahead and switched that out with a black limestone so that the whole thing just looks like one big, beautiful, modern piece. That's just one of many ways that you can create a focal point with your paint. The opposite is to not put the focus on something. That's kind of like the light switch covers and the outlet covers and all the little things that go into a space. It's what you make different is what's going to get your attention when you walk into a space. So you get to play with this one and you get to decide, do I want to accent the cabinets by painting them a different color that really catches your eye and really draws you in? Or are the cabinets kind of ugly and I really want to make them disappear? So I'm actually going to paint them the same color as the wall and I'm going to make them go away because maybe you don't like the trim that's on them anymore or maybe you don't like the shape of them something about them is not your favorite well then don't make them black and the rest of your room white because your eye is going to immediately go to the cabinets you can do the same exact thing with your trim in, oh my gosh, I'm so many different. I was just sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, this can be so helpful in so many different ways. I'm trying to think of all the different ones so I can tell all of them to you. Okay, let's start with the baseboards. If you have baseboards that are maybe not the style that you want, let's say you want with shaker in the rest of your house, 
but your baseboards are still the same ones that came with the house. They've got a little extra trim. They're a little bit more, they have a little bit more flourish to them than maybe what you want. Then you would probably want to do what I did, which is paint the entire wall from the floor all the way up to the ceiling, all one color. And no, I don't change the sheen on my trim. Everybody wants to know that. And all the contractors think that I must be nuts. This woman is out of her mind. She's crazy. What is she talking about? Trim has to be painted with a higher sheen. Why? <laughs> Why? Who made that rule? I've got all the trim in my house painted matte, just like the wall, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't walk around the house, you know, kicking the wall, and I don't have my kids and the kids and I, we don't just, and my husband, of course, too, we don't just run our, our feet and our legs against the baseboards. I, we just, I don't know why, and we sure as heck don't do it on the ceiling. I mean, how do you even get up there? Why does it have to be a different, why does it have to be a different sheen? It doesn't have to be a different sheen. I don't know who invented that rule, but it's a man-made rule and you can break it. And then you can choose to keep it if you like it. Because when you use a different sheen, it does change the color slightly. And you might like that look. So there's a lot to consider when you're gonna be painting a room. You have to think through, do I want the trim work to stand out? Because if that's the case, then you, mean to, you really need to think about painting it a different color even. Why not paint the room white and the trim light gray or light taupe? You have options at your disposal. Right now, a lot of people are painting their windows black, but you could also paint them a taupe color. We're doing that on a lot of exteriors right now, and it is gorgeous. Another one that's really important is the doors. You can paint them a different color from the trim. You can paint them the same color as the trim, which is what I personally usually do. Um, you can also accent them with a the color and make them stand out. Well, you can really use your doors as a feature and you can also make them disappear. I'm gonna be featuring my daughter's room. I've almost got everything delivered for her room. I'm so excited. We've been working on her room for the last few weeks and you may have caught a glimpse if you watch the, the playlist for Fridays with V. That's where I show a lot of the behind the scenes and kind of what we're working on before it arrives. But um, yes, um, in, in her room, she has a wall of closets that are ugly. They just are not pretty, and I don't like seeing a wall of old closets from 1994. I mean, the 90s were great and all, but those doors really just aren't very nice. So instead of painting them white when I painted her room, I painted them the same color as the wall. And what I've done now is I've made that wall silent and it's not become a feature or an accent. It's now visually silent. And I don't think about the doors being there anymore. It's almost like it's just become a wall. And this can be so useful in so many different scenarios. If you have a door, maybe the door itself is old and just kind of ugly. In my bathroom, I painted mine black. I went so bold because they were so boring and just so lifeless. And I, I just, at the time when we moved in, I was like, well, I don't have the money to, to pay to put all new doors in right now. Maybe I'll get to that at some point. What can I do now? That's what I love about paint, is that you can completely transform your home with a little bit of paint. And it's the easiest, one of the least expensive ways of doing it, and it is transformative. So that's why I love it. Think about your doors as an accent or something that you wanna make disappear, and you don't have to paint them any, you can paint them any color you want. There's no rule. Ooh, yes! The next one is to think of your ceiling as the fifth wall. The ceiling is your fifth ceiling. This is your fifth ceiling. Wow, that was genius. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna need another sip of coffee, I think, before I keep going. Mm. Apparently, I'm tired today. <laughs> okay, your ceiling is your fifth wall. It is such a missed opportunity for so many people. They don't think about their ceiling when they think about their room and their paint. Or the painter is there and he's like, what about the ceiling? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I didn't think about the ceiling. I get a lot of emergency calls like that or emergency texts from friends. They're like, what do I do about the ceiling? <laughs> I'm like, let's 
let's talk about the options, okay? There's a lot. There's a lot of things that you can do with the ceiling. You can make it disappear. If you have a small room and you want this, the room to feel taller and bigger, painting it the same color as the walls will do that for you. So I realize that if you have a white room and you paint the ceiling white, it will make it look lighter, brighter, taller. If you have a dark room and you paint the ceiling dark, my painter thought I was bananas when I told him that I wanted the ceiling to be black. He thought I was nuts. He legitimately thought I was nuts. And I was like, just paint it. And if I hate it, I will pay you to paint it back, okay? <laughs> I couldn't get the man, I couldn't convince him to paint ceiling black, okay? It was like, it was like asking him to like rip his arm off or something and like paint with his foot. I don't know, he literally couldn't, he was like, no. <laughs> I was like, just trust me, okay? Just paint the ceiling. So it makes the room actually feel cozier. So if you have a really high ceiling or honestly any room that you're gonna do this to, if you're, if you're going dark, on the walls and the ceiling, it's gonna make the space feel cozier. And that's what I was after because the space just felt like the ceiling was just floating off. The other thing that you can do, when you have a ceiling that maybe has angles in it, you have to really think through. Traditionally, people have painted all of that just white. They made ceiling white. All right, Haley just got home, so that was all very exciting around here for just a minute. So anyways, we were talking about the ceiling, right? We were talking about angles. So a lot of times what I see is that if your room has angles or vaults or anything like that, a lot of times it's the angled ceilings. And I don't know about where you are, but in our area in the 90s, they used that feature a lot. And a lot of times it makes really awkward painting situations. So what I try to do is look at those angles and decide whether accenting them with a different color than the wall will look better or if it will actually make it worse. Sometimes it's better to include those angles as part of the ceiling and give them their own moment. And then other times it's better to just, that's why I had my painter paint the whole thing black was because the angles were like this and I only had a little strip of ceiling left and it was gonna be weird to have this angled wall. Do you see what I'm saying? You're gonna have a weird angled wall and that's gonna be white and then the wall is black and oh, it was just too much, it's too much. So you have to really think through those angles and whether featuring them in a different color will make it better or if it will make it stand out in a way that you don't really want it to. The other thing you can do with paint, with your ceiling, is that you can just create a feature with the ceiling. But I think that your ceiling is such an opportunity with paint to either highlight it, to make it disappear, to make the room look bigger, to make the room look smaller, to make it feel cozier. You know what I mean. You guys get to play with it. You get to have some fun with it. And even on the ceilings, I still use matte paint because I just like it to feel a little bit more earthy, a little bit more natural. <music> Okay, we talked a lot about the sheens and let's just talk about this now. Like in total, what do we do with the sheens? Because I think that that's probably one of my most asked questions is about the sheen. I know, I saved the best for last. That's what I do, right? <laughs> I saved your most asked question for last. It wasn't on purpose. I just made the list, okay? <laughs> I really don't think it through that much. <laughs> Maybe I should. Maybe I should do that in the future, but no, I don't. I just think through all the things and as they come to my mind, that's how I make the list. <laughs> but your most asked question out of everything I get is about the sheen. I always use the matte or the flat on the walls. It's just what I like. And then when I tell people that, the next question is, but doesn't that get dirty? And everything gets dirty, but you have those little Mr. Clean, little white clean pads. And I, I have to tell you, the walls almost never get dirty. I, I only bring it out maybe once a year in high, super high traffic areas. Usually where Landon walks in from baseball and just runs his hands along the wall. But I haven't repainted the rooms because of the paint not holding up. I just take the little Mr. Clean wipe on my white walls, just wipe it down. It just works. So I don't think that the sheen really matters as far as durability. Now in a bathroom, you might wanna take your sheen up. So you may wanna do an eggshell. You can even go a little bit more glossy if you want to. I personally don't like a room to be semi-gloss. 
<laughs> it's just a little uncomfortable. I, it's, I think you'd be better off just going on a higher sheen and like, and actually lacquering the walls and going for like a feature wall. You know, it's a feature room. The whole room is high lacquered. I think that's better than having like almost like a mid sheen. I'd rather just have this sort of like raw, natural feeling on the walls, which is why I always do matte paint. And I use it for the trim. I use it for all the trim, the windows, the, the baseboards, everything. Um, I just think it's a lot of fun. The matte paints that we get in the US mimic those European paints like Ferro and Ball that are like $100 a gallon here in the US. If you use a matte paint from Benjamin Moore or Bear, you're gonna get a very similar color and feel. There's a chalkiness to their paint that they use in Europe and that's what, I just love the way that looks. Your paint sheen is such a personal choice and I hope today I've just given you just some food for thought because I never dictate to my clients what they should do. I never prescribe things to them. I help talk them through the options and then we come up with, if this is what you like, if you want the room to feel more natural, then this is how I would paint the room. If you want the trim, like if you have a dining room with big trim work and you want that trim to really stand out, then you need to paint it white or flip flop your colors and do dark on the bottom and light on the top. You, you need to make it a feature if you want it to stand out. For me, I wanted my room to feel really modern so I painted the whole thing all the way down one color. It's fun. It's fun to play with your colors and your sheens test things out. I hope this video will encourage you to enjoy creating a home. Your home is your haven. This is the one place on the planet that gets to be all about you. And it's the place that you get to come home to. It's the place you get to rest. It's the place that you celebrate. It's the place that you sleep in and you wake up to. And, it, and it's so important to create the space for yourself and for your loved ones. And so I hope that even just these little hacks, these little tips and tricks will bring you a little bit of that joy back, the joy of creating your home and creating this space for you and your family to enjoy together. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you found it really helpful. Let me know in the comments if you would like this paint video for exterior because I think there's almost more, no, there's just as many. Nope. There's just as many things that you could say about that too. So lots of things like gutters and windows and trim. Oh yeah, it's a lot. So let me know if you'd like that video. Thank you again for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope that you'll hit subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, be a part of our awesome community. We have so many cool people that are a part of this community and I just feel honored. I, I really am, I'm <laughs> getting all emotional. <laughs> I really am so honored to be a part of your lives and a part of creating your homes. I, that is the most important place on the entire planet is home. So I'm honored that I get to be a part of that with you. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.